Good morning, folks, as you watch the plasma dancing above the big sunspot group departing along with the umbras, please stick around to hear our invitation to Charles Eisenstein, and maybe even help send this video along to him. We've got new umbral magnetic field structures incoming on the sun, but honestly the sunspot situation is unaffected. We still don't have solid umbras beneath those fields. It's plaguing and a mesospot. The Earth-facing coronal hole is departing, and we see no eruptive activity whatsoever. The top eruption threats are actually plasma filaments. You can see them as thin, dark lines rather than the larger, dark patches, and which dance around in the corona, waiting to eject. In addition to the ones you can see facing Earth, we do have more coming in. Both north and south show good-sized plasma ropes spilling out through the solar atmosphere as they twist around with the rest of our star. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, we find solar flaring back to quiet without sunspots to make them. The solar wind and magnetic instability are calming, but that departing coronal hole should change that by tomorrow night or Wednesday. The energy from those days of geomagnetic storm activity is mostly integrating down through the Pacific, where three major hurricanes play twister on the open seas. Top threat in the U.S. tonight is post erica flooding in the southeast. High and low pressure team up to drive unseasonably cold air down the western coastlines of Europe. Got twin lows west of New Zealand there and a convergence aiming at southwestern Australia too. Now folks, it's 6 a.m. Eastern Time and I'd like to send a special message to Charles Eisenstein of the Huffington Post blog. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe everyone. On August 27th, Charles Eisenstein wrote a thoughtful and well-researched article for the Huffington Post blog on suspecting the overbearing shadow of, quote, settled science. Best of all, the lead-in was his rediscovery of the electric universe theories, with an eye toward the manner in which its opponents attempt to debunk it. Titled The Need for Venture Science, Charles details faith-shaking truths, including the use of scientific fraud, publication bias and unfair processes of peer review, and of funding decisions. Charles, I can tell you that our own extensive coverage of censorship, fraud, and bullying in other fields could convince anyone that some academics have gone astray, and it wholly comports with your observations and sentiments. Charles did an excellent job picking the right high points and the right quotes to illustrate this issue that is seriously facing science as a whole, and especially those seeking to put forth evidence that challenges long-standing beliefs. But for someone who just recently took back their interest in the Electric Universe theories, it can be quite a daunting task traversing this topic without a guide. Are the Electric Universe theories different from the Plasma Universe theories? How can the Electric Universe help us better understand the relationship between the Earth and the Sun? Where do we stand on evidence against the need for black holes or dark matter? With the latter, I can tell you that those in the field are already beginning to see the light. You see, gravity can't hold a galaxy together in current mainstream physics. Mainstream physics can't even describe what causes gravity to be exerted by mass. But what if you could see the full picture of the electromagnetic, or, better yet, electrostatic and plasma interactions in space and on smaller scales. Then, my friend, you'd be in prime position to be observing the frontier. Charles Eisenstein, would you please be our guest in Pittsburgh this October 17th and 18th for Observing the Frontier, a conference for those riding that frothy crest of this wave. No matter where your scientific experience ends, this show will be something to see. I personally have four talks I'll be giving throughout the weekend, one on how close Earth came to really reeling from a solar storm just back here in June, another on electricity and earthquakes, one on the interaction of the Shoals binary stars with our own solar system, and one on Earth's changing magnetism. But there are better men than I who will be there. Pierre-Marie Robitaille revolutionized magnetic resonance imaging when everyone else said it wasn't possible. His understanding of black body radiation is now being used to better understand some great mysteries. He spent decades at The Ohio State University's radiology department. Kongpop Uyen's day job is at NASA, 
but he spends his free time probing similar secrets of electricity and plasma, specifically here, how they relate to disaster prediction on Earth. Although his work with the observers, the Thunderbolts Project, and others tends to be as an independent, outside of his government employment, his insights into the field are tops and second to none. When I visited him in October of 2014, he was literally controlling plasma and levitating objects with static force. Speaking of the Thunderbolts Project, David Talbot is a foundational member of the group and has done a great deal for the scientists in the electric universe realm through his own research into archetypes and similar evidence of solar system scale electrical interactions. The professor will be there as well. August Dunning is at Caltech, and we're very lucky that he is jetting across the land to come speak to us about Mars weather and climate, as it is affected by the sun and other forces. Also, folks, Adrian D'Amico. He was my best friend growing up, and he founded the Suspect Sky YouTube channel. In a realm of our community where I am unfailingly skeptical, he has found enough evidence to merit a closer look at fast radio bursts and certain unusual lunar features. The crew from our weekly podcast, Fly on the Wall, will be there too, including, and announcing here, Billy Yelverton. His status was uncertain, but our electric lab guru appears to be all set to come around as well. In addition to offering decades of experience, his lab has recreated geological features on Earth, Mars, the Moon, and many dwarf planets and asteroids, using nothing more than electricity and plasma. Charles. It would be both an honor and a pleasure to have you attend our conference this year in Pittsburgh. Your outline on the need for venture science is spot on in our opinion, and we have the evidence to back you up. Well, what do you say, Mr. Eisenstein? Tell your bosses it won't cost them a thing but your time. Be our guest, Charles. This is going to be a lot of fun. And that goes for everyone else as well. The links are found on this page. Seven weeks and counting. Charles, my email is ben at observatoryproject.com. We really hope you accept our invitation.